14 centuries. It has been 14 centuries since one of the most influential men this world has ever known passed away. But I'm not talking about Jesus. The Prophet Muhammad died in the 7th century AD. The cause of his death is debatable. Many Muslims will say that Muhammad died of natural causes. Others, however, will claim that Muhammad died because he was poisoned. But no matter which side you may agree with, there is a detail in the story of Muhammad's death that is often overlooked. This detail ultimately reveals everything we need to know about the Prophet Muhammad. But before we reveal this specific detail, we first have to understand the story in its greater context. Let's begin in the Battle of Khaybar. The Battle of Khaybar took place in the year of 629. This battle was fought between Muhammad and his early followers versus a Jewish tribe that lived in Khaybar. During this battle, a famous Jewish warrior named Marhab ibn Harith was killed. Marhab had a sister named Zainab. Why is she important? Let's read this story from Ibn Sa'd. When the Apostle of Allah conquered Khaybar and he had peace of mind, Zainab bint al-Harith, the sister of Marhab, who was the spouse of Salam ibn Mishkam, inquired, Which part of the goat is liked by Muhammad? They said, The foreleg. Then she slaughtered one from her goats and roasted it. Then she wanted a poison which could not fail. The Jews discussed the poisons and became united on one poison. She poisoned the goat by putting more poison on the forelegs and the shoulders. Zainab, whose brother was killed by Muhammad and his men, got together with the other Jews in Khaybar and they all decided that they were going to kill Muhammad by feeding him poisoned lamb. When the sun had set and the Apostle of Allah returned after leading the people in Maghrib, that's the sunset prayers, she sat by his feet. She said, O oh Abu al-Qasim, here is a present which I wish to offer you. The Prophet ordered it to be taken. Zainab waited for Muhammad and his men to finish Maghrib and offered the poisoned lamb as a gift to them. Muhammad gave orders for her gift to be accepted. It was served to him and to his companions who were present. The apostle of Allah took the foreleg and put a piece of it into his mouth. Bishr ibn al-Bara also took a piece and put it into his mouth. When the Apostle of Allah ate one morsel of it, Bishr also ate his, and the other people also ate from it. Muhammad's men did something very interesting here. They waited for Muhammad to eat a piece of the lamb first before they ate any of it themselves. Then the Apostle of Allah said, Hold back your hands! because this foreleg has informed me that it is poisoned. When hearing this, Bishr said, By him who has made you great, I discovered it from the morsel I took. Nothing prevented me from emitting it out, but the idea that I did not like to make your food unrelishing. So Bishr ibn al-Bara noticed that the lamb was poisoned before Muhammad did, but... He did not spit out the piece that he had put in his mouth because he didn't want to offend Muhammad. Bishr goes on to say, When you had eaten what was in your mouth, I did not like to save my life after yours. And I also thought you would not have eaten it if there was something wrong. Bishr told Muhammad that he did not want to save his own life ahead of Muhammad. Plus, Bishr figured that since Muhammad is God's prophet, Muhammad would have known that the lamb was poisoned before eating it. Poor guy. Bishr did not rise from his seat, but his color changed to that of a green cloth. For a year, the pain did not permit him to change his sides, but with the help of others. And then he expired.
Because of his devotion to Muhammad, Bishr lived as a paralytic. Finally, after one year of relentless suffering, he died a painful death. The Apostle of Allah sent for Zainab bint al-Harith and said to her, What induced you to do what you have done? She replied, You have done to my people what you have done. You have killed my father, my uncle, and my husband. So I said to myself, If you are a prophet, the foreleg will inform you. And others have said, If you are a king, we will get rid of you. Muhammad asks Zainab why she did this to them, and she gives him a simple answer. I'm only doing to you what you have done to my people. She also tells him that if he really was God's prophet, then he would have known that the lamb was poisoned. In Sahih Bukhari, Muhammad asked the group of Jews living in Khaybar about the lamb. Have you put the poison in this roasted sheep? They replied, yes. He asked, what made you do that? They replied, we intended to learn if you were a liar, in which case we would be relieved from you. And if you were a prophet, then it would not harm you. Now, this is what's very interesting about the story. The poisoning took place immediately after the Battle of Khaybar, which was in the year 629. But Muhammad did not die until the year 632. That's three years after he was poisoned. This is why Muslims will argue that Muhammad was in fact a true prophet of God, because he did not immediately die from that poison. And in all fairness, this is a very good argument. But remember that little detail that I said would reveal everything we need to know about the Prophet Muhammad? Here it is. Sahih Bukhari 4428. The Prophet, in his ailment in which he died, used to say, O oh Aisha, I still feel the pain caused by the food I ate in Khaybar. And at this time, I feel as if my aorta is being cut from that poison. You might be asking, why is this detail so important? Let's let the Qur'an answer that question for us. Surah 69, verses 44 through 46. Had the messenger made up something in our name, we would have certainly seized him by his right hand, then severed his aorta. Just to be sure, let's take a look at a different translation of Surah 69. Ibn Kathir says, And if he had forged a false saying concerning us, we surely would have seized him by his right hand, and then we certainly would have cut off al-wetin from him. And according to Ibn Abbas, it, al-wetin, refers to the artery of the heart, and it is the vein that is attached to the heart. So Allah himself revealed in the Qur'an that if Muhammad is in fact a false prophet, he would have killed Muhammad by cutting off his aorta. As Muhammad is dying, he openly admits that the poisoned lamb he ate in Khaybar was cutting his aorta. Of all the words that Muhammad could have said while he was dying, he chose to say the very words that proved him to be a false prophet, even according to Allah in the Qur'an. Now that we have explored the death of Muhammad, it's only fair that we compare his death to the death of Jesus, the Lamb of God who was slain for us, versus the false prophet who was killed by a piece of lamb. So, be sure to tune in next time for part two of this video. One is dead, the other lives forever. Until then, Salam.